everybody. Once again, this is Fred Wamko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. As you could see in the introduction, my spirits are very high today. I'm doing the introduction with my sixth out of eight grandchildren, and he's just having a ball. I guess that's how you transfer these things from generation to generation, they say, hopefully. Not that I want him to be a broadcaster. He could be whatever he wants to be. But I just thought it was a good way to come in today. But before I get started, let me do my normal greeting, saying good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you are around the world. Today we have a potpourri. But what I really like about today's show, and I think you're going to like it, is that I'm just bringing you third-party sound bites about the Chicago State Tinubu Gate. And the beauty of it is that all through my shows for the last year, you've heard me talk about progressive Yorubas, progressive Yorubas, progressive Yorubas. And like I continue to say, may God bless progressive Yorubas. And today you'll understand why, because most of what I'm bringing, 90% of the sound bites are coming from different Yorubas and where they stand, not just on Tinubu Gate, but on the crook, the drug kingpin that stole his way into the presidency of Nigeria. And I say these things so boldly to irritate his gullible supporters that come out on TV talking meaningless trash to justify the roguery and the corruption and the dirt that has followed this man for 50 years. But I'm going to introduce this with a real third party, which is an American journalist's opinion doing exactly what David Hundeni has been doing and these gullible supporters of Tinubu have been discrediting David Hundeni. Here is an American journalist telling us not just why Tinubu is a crook, but how he was aided by insiders at Chicago State. And I think you have a lot of officials who are very nervous right now. Because, and so I, I want to say this to you, Precious. Think about it for a second. If you're a university, it doesn't matter if you're an American university or any university, hmm. but if you're a university and one of your graduates goes on to become the president of a nation, a nation that has over 200 million people, don't you think you will be promoting that? As your university? Absolutely. His pictures will be everywhere. Why Why did this university not promote the fact that one of their alums just became the president of one of the largest countries on the continent of Africa? With 200 million people. The, I would be promoting that the, like the, crazy. The largest. And, and, and let's be honest, the Nigerian American population is arguably the best educated population in the United States. People from Nigeria who've come over here to immigrate, come over here, they go to fine institutions. They, uh, those who stay here, they get great jobs. Thank you. Awesome. So um, I'm really very excited that you did join us in this conversation, especially because I'd like you to you know, give us a bit of insight on how things happen in your alma mater. Right. So let's let's first of all let you give us a background of what your school, you know, the overall administration of Chicago State University is like. So uh, just to, you know, give your listeners a background about me, um, I attended Chicago State University yes. in the late 90s. I worked as the editor of the school newspaper for three years. Oh, yeah. And That's so a temple, right? Yes, that is Tempo, yes, the please. university newspaper, which the mm -hmm. university uh, shut down a few years ago. So one thing that your viewers and listeners all need to understand is that the university itself does not have a student newspaper. Mm. And that is one of the biggest problems right there, that mm -hmm. there is nobody to hold that administration accountable. Folks, sorry to interrupt, but just to give you a little perspective, why this video in particular about the Chicago journalist talking about 
Chicago State. I live in Chicago, and I was here during Bola Ahmed Tinubu's eight years as governor. And this has nothing to do with Fashola, but I'm just trying to state a point. Also, during Fashola's eight years of governor of Lagos State, both Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Fashola were very frequent in Chicago. They really did a lot of good stuff for Lagos State during those 16 years with what I would say was a lot of ideas of what they got from Chicago as a stepping stone to what they wanted to convert Lagos to. And all the beautiful things they got from Chicago, I really think they implemented in Lagos. You can't take that away from them. And for somebody who has very crooked ideas, I must say to you that if you follow the politics of America, they will tell you that there is a lot of dirt in the Chicago political machine. The Chicago political machine is run by Democrats. And many of the iron hand politics that Tinubu brought to Lagos can be traced to what he may have learned from some of the dirty Chicago politicians. Just like I talk about progressive Yorubas and Tinubu's cabal, you have progressive good Chicago politicians, but you have those dirty rats in the Democratic Party that have been to jail time and time and time again for bribery and corruption. Those are Tinubu's tutors. And if you listen to this narrator carefully, he was the editor-in-chief of the Chicago State University newspaper at the time. But he separated the academic staff from the administrative staff. And he made it clear that that administrative staff was a bunch of dirty rats. And I believe him. Because when this investigation goes on into Tinubu Gate, which we haven't seen anything yet, you're going to find that there are insiders in Chicago State that aided Nigeria's crook in chief, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in all the things he did over the last 40 years. And that's not the end of it. I strongly believe that there are Chicago politicians, very strong Chicago politicians, I wouldn't say which race, that also helped him to influence the people at Chicago State who were taking the money on the crooked side. But you should also note that he donated on the clean side, whatever you call clean, a ton of money to Chicago State during that period. Just keep listening. Temple was a university-based newspaper at the time you were there? Yes. Okay. Yes, we had a newspaper. It, okay. it, the newspaper was around for 50 years. Oh, wow. And then the university shut it down um, in recent years. Um, and there's been so much that's gone on in Chicago State in the last 10 to 15 years. So it actually does not surprise me that they are in the middle of this international incident um, mm -hmm. because of the dysfunction that happens at that university. And it starts at the highest level being the office of the president of the university down to the members of the board of trustees who are appointed by the governor of Illinois. Um, so that this situation, this sad situation that we're currently talking about is occurring is not a shock to me at all. And, and I say that because you have to understand the history of Chicago state. You have to realize that Chicago state has had a former president that was federal, uh, of, that was federally convicted of crimes. Hmm. They had a financial aid director that was federally convicted of crimes. And these people went to prison um, hmm. 
this this is not a surprise to me that they're in the middle of this mess. Not at all, Precious. I've covered this university for over 20 years, and they talk out of both sides of their mouth all the time, all the time. It is very difficult to get information out of this university. Oh, wow. So, so you're saying that university management hasn't been quite honest with students and straightforward in your dealings? Is that what you're no. saying? No. Oh, never have been. Oh, never wow. have been. Oh, wow. No. And, and, and I'm not just saying that. You can ask any Chicago State alum, and they'll tell you the exact same thing. And so, you know, one of the things I find is funny, Precious, is that people in Nigeria have been asking me, well, you know, how do you feel about all this bad press that's now coming down on the university you attended? And I was like, I'm absolutely happy. I'm absolutely happy because it's now shining a spotlight on Chicago State on an international level, which means now they got to get their acts together or they're going to be heads rolling. And I would not be surprised if the governor of Illinois, as this thing keeps going on, the governor, J.B. Pritzker, if he absolutely steps in and we start seeing board of trustee members resigning or being removed, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the president eventually taking the downfall for this. There's a lot more to this story. And what I'll say is that it's because of the culture of Chicago State and the culture of dysfunction and the history of corruption that they've had within their administration. None of this is shocking to me. It's shocking to you. It's shocking to people in Nigeria. This is not shocking to journalists in the city of Chicago. And, and the really sad part about this is that the education you get at Chicago State University, I'd put it up against anybody. My professors were top notch. However, the administration is trash. They are complete trash. They always have been. And this is not a surprise that we find ourselves here on October the 6th, 2023, talking about this and asking questions about was Chicago State complicit and what has happened. It is an investigation that is going to be ongoing. I am happy that this is an international story. I'm hoping that even more journalists start digging into this because we're going to find out a whole lot about this university and how this whole thing went down. None of this is a surprise to me. Folks, none of this is a surprise to the young man. And that's what we are dealing with. The legitimacy of Nigeria's president over the next four years. Listen to what progressive Yorubas are saying with conviction. And every one of them is so right. But shamefully, they are being attacked by the hound dogs, the Dele Alake and Bayon Onuga students, people who studied at their school of distortion journalism. Just listen. And this is my boom. I have this bad news to tell you first because that just happened this afternoon. Our broadcast last night on YouTube got removed this afternoon because somebody somewhere reported it as a cyberbullying show. I tried to kind of uh, I dragged that with YouTube. Not that I got punished for that, but they had to remove the entire I mean, full video. They must not uh, shut us down. Remember that. And that's the bad one. It is nothing to worry about, nothing that is not really under control. But it, it also tells us that whenever we tell ourselves that as much as they pretended not to be hearing or seeing, all of these they are actually invested 
in us watching how and how much impact this must be kind of making on a lot of people and if it is going to become something too big to handle let us begin to cut it down now but they can't yeah it is going to get even hotter and hotter and hotter boiling because this is october there is so much that is going to come to light this month the top of them all is the atifku versus tifnumbu in chicago courts what shocked the american judges about this whole thing is the desperation of tifnumbu the level of his desperation to stop them from releasing the transcripts and record since they are already found fractions that even according to Nigeria law, Tifnumbu shouldn't be inside the asshole rock. It should be inside the Kirikiri, the maximum prison in Kirikiri. But because the Nigeria Tribunal Court refused to take a single look at all of the evidence presented, and they thrown everything out, and they legitimized the illegitimate Tifnumbu. So, this is the shocker to the American judges. Like, what the hell? How could somebody be so determined? Like, if they release my record, something is going to happen. What is going to happen? Remember, Tifnumbu already has four different uh, birth certificates. He was born in 1957. He was born in 1952. He was born in 1954. He was born in 1951 four different birth certificates some said the real tifnumbu today was former amoda jekini shongoliri okay and he got adopted by abiba tumogaji that is the story abiba tumogaji changed his name what was his former name did he lose his, uh, you know, well, you know, what, what? that is why he will present a certificate that says he's uh, an accountant, is not one. He has diploma in clinical, clinical, is not one. He's a uh, uh, business, uh, what do you call it, degree in police, I mean, business uh, science in business administration, and then uh, honors. All of these things are just makeup. And a lot of people have never paid attention. And finally, Chicago State University have finally put themselves on uh, the hangman's, uh, what do you call it, uh, slaughter table. Folks, this, this is getting serious. The plot is really thickening. And um, the, the repercussions is something we can't even imagine yet. Before I bring in another Yoruba person and what they're saying, just listen to this lady about the repercussions, and this is only the beginning. Hundreds of UK registered nurses must retake their boards after widespread fraud has been uncovered at a Nigerian testing center. They are suspected of obtaining their results fraudulently through the uh, Nursing Midwife Council exam by using proxy testers, stand-ins to take their tests for them. That it was actually Pearson View that tipped off regulators. 
So 515 UK nurses tested at the center and at least 48 are suspected. And now all of them must retake the test. They're being given three chances to take it and pass. If they refuse to take it or fail after three attempts, they're going to have to go to an investigative committee. And additionally, 669 of 1,440 who have applied to the UK register after testing at that center in Nigeria are suspected to be fraudulent applicants. And they're also required to take a new computer-based test. It, it just keeps happening. And now, Nigeria's number one human rights and political activist, at least based on the outspoken word, Introducing the indomitable barrister, Dele Farutimi. The depositions are clear and they are not ambiguous. The person representing CSU was unequivocal in declaring that the certificate submitted to INEC by Mr. Ball, the man known as Bola Ahmed Jinubu, does not emanate from them. That is a matter that should be conclusively dealt with and forgotten about. Whether the Nigerian courts will find that a sufficient basis to do the needful, that's another argument that we can have at another time. But that we're still arguing about what has been conclusively proven in the deposition speaks a lot to the kind of country that we have become. Now, when you now speak about a missing document, the person went to school, we now begin to dig to the substance of the issue. You now begin to have to ask, answer the question. The document submitted to CSU itself, showing that it was a female that had the qualification to enter the place, nobody is talking about that. If we are not going to be dealing with the substance and we are just dancing around the issue, we can't even agree on what is not or what should not be argued about that is already clear in the face of the deposition that this document to Mark A that was given to INEC by Mr. Tinubu did not emanate from the body that was purportedly issuing the document. The body came out clearly. Now, whether Mr. Tinubu attended the university, whether he attended having the right qualifications, whether he lied about the schools he attended, whether government college Lagos was found in 1970 or 1974, that's another story entirely. And the deeper you dig into this, the messier it becomes. And I actually think that we have a duty not to allow truth to become transactional and subjective. Facts on the ground are clear. The certificate sub submitted by Mr. Tinubu is a forgery. That is not my opinion. That is what the registrar of the school has declared on oath. So if what our own courts would do with it is what they are prepping for with all these alternative narratives and facts that they are spewing. Oh, so I have a driver's license but I forgot my driver's license and I have now forged one so that I might prove that I actually had one issued to me. It's still a forgery. <clears throat> you really think that's an earful? Earful? You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't heard nothing yet. Listen to the next guy. And then you know how shameful, how disgraceful, how disgusting all these apologists for a drug king, kingpin are. And shamefully, I guarantee you, to the last one of them, even the ones among them that are just as crooked as Bola Ahmed Tinubu, every one of them is teaching their children how to be ethical and how to be moral and how to do things right. And they wonder why their children rebel against them. Listen, folks. There are 40 million Yoruba people in the entire globe. That's the estimation. There are 222 million there about people in Nigeria. There are 93 million registered voters in Nigeria. The, the verdict that is in Ashadbola made 
President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's hand is by 8 million people. Shall all of us who are not part of that 8 million now say to ourselves that we are now at the proudest moment of our lives, wherein under deposition, documents are flying about. And you know, Cheung, the painful thing about it is that we want the entire country to pretend as if Atiku is now so guilty because he has the stamina and the gusto to go through all this. Even if nothing happens from the Supreme Court and if something happens from the Supreme Court, would this not be a line that we should never cross in this country? And I need to put it to you, Sheung. Atiku, this is not the first time Atiku has put himself in arm's way just for all of us. Even if you can't remember any, even though there are a plethora of others and court cases in court. The one that all Nigerians must even take a bow for is that, do you know how Nigeria would have become if it was really possible for somebody to stay in power perpetually and somebody had to stand at that time when even generals in this country were mooted? If Atiku has gone to Chicago to go and find the certificate, pray, why wasn't the certificate produced in the first time? Why is the secondary school, why is it a secondary school that doesn't exist? Shehu, our own, we have been derobed because we have now become a nation of cheaters. We have now become a nation of duplicitous people who cannot even, I mean, come on, even the back ends of some other countries. You know what the governments and of the countries are doing? They're doing like this. They are whispering behind our back. And she, when we wanted to go on this journey, one day I was on one of those programs I was being, I, I always try to speak fact. I try to say to even the president then that, is immortality in the villa because the contraption and everything put together does not suggest that this is the best that Nigeria can put forward. I feel diminished. I feel that, oh, is this the, are these the children of Bafemi Awolowo? Are these the people that Ad Abraham Adesoya and the likes of them in AD? Did they know all this and allow it to slide? Did you read the deposition? Even the school itself must bury his, his head in shame. The school has a right to say, this is totally the position we have and be and unambiguous about it. They can't write that, that their position in a manner that in one breath you get the impression they are saying, oh, he's with us, he went to our school. In another breath they are saying, we can't validate the society certificate. In another breath they are saying, the yeah, vendors did it. In another breath they can't find the person that signed it. In another breath they... they... She... That's what we are dealing with. That's the kind of man People are fighting disgracefully to retain office, an office he stole, sent out thugs to kill just to get into office. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Fred Monko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. Until next time. Good night and God bless. This is a song for the new year and every day. I want you to sing it every day. It's a declaration. Thank you.